Hey everybody, it's Chris Hayes. My web address is chrishayesphoto.com and I am going to show you how to uh, iron shirts with frequency separation in Photoshop. So, see right here we've got a really wrinkly shirt and uh, we're going to fix that. It's going to be really cool. So, um, I was in a, a Facebook forum the other day and I showed somebody how to do this and they were all excited and they said oh my gosh I gotta know how to do this so I said hey you know what I will do a blog post and I thought about doing screenshots but come on video is just so much cooler so um, the first thing we gotta do is I'm in Lightroom uh, and the, the first important thing we gotta do is check and go over here to your preferences and make sure that your edit in Photoshop is mine is TIFF uh, it can be PSD if you want. I have reasons why I like TIFF. I'm not going to explain it. Uh, the important thing right here is bit depth is 16 bit. So if you want to use my action, and I'm going to pro provide that action on a link, then you need to use uh, 16 bit. Okay? Important part. The rest of this, yeah, we don't care about. It. I mean, you can figure it out on your own. So um, you'll see. So what we're going to concentrate on right now is just ironing the shirt. This is the important thing. I'm going to use frequency separation. Um, obviously there's a lot of other stuff in here I would fix. I've already uh, fixed this once um, so you can see kind of what the final final version looks like. Uh, the first time I did it, maybe it'll be a little different on the ironing. We, we don't know. So um, let's, go, let's go do it. So I use a lot of quick keys. I'm recording the quick keys and so they're going to pop up on the screen when I use them. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to use Control E. I'm on a PC, and that is Edit In, and that will take you right out to Photoshop. And so here we are. The first thing that I always do is I uh, hit Control J, and that makes a copy of the layer. So now we're layer one down here. And now I've got an action set up, and what it's going to do is basically it's going to run frequency separation and if you don't know what frequency separation is the the quick version is that it separates your image into two different things you've got textures and you've got tones and you'll see it in a second but the the textures are things that are small and uh, you know like wrinkles and and pimples and all kinds of cool things like that and then the tones are just the general tone of the area so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit F, uh, Shift F12, and that's going to run the action that I created. And the only reason it runs it is because I set up in Photoshop to run my action when I hit Shift F12. And it's going to stop right here at Gaussian Blur, and it's going to give you this option. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to press some keys, and you'll see what those are. Um, I'm going to zoom in here, and basically everything this is showing you the lower level this is showing you the um, the tones okay so anything that you can really see in the tone layer like this uh, is going to exist in the tone layer and then anything that is blurred out you really can't see it that's going to exist in the uh, texture layer so the tones are the high the low frequencies and the textures are the high frequencies so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my radius up a little bit because there are some things here and I'm looking at our face because that's what I always do first um, but really what I want to do is come down here and look at her uh, look at her wrinkles because that's what we're fixing um, so it doesn't get if I if I jack it up to like you know, 55, then that's all just one generally solid area, but it doesn't have quite enough detail for me. So I want to at least take it down to, I don't know, let's just say, let's just say 12.7. And let's just look at her face. Yeah, her face looks pretty good. There's a little bit of tone there, but I, I think it looks pretty good. So wh what it's going to do is it's going to put all of that extra information in the high layer um, and I'm not going to explain how the frequency separation works and all the stuff that you have to do because I made this action and uh, if you want to use my action awesome if you don't then you can go google it and figure it out yourself 
All right, so now we're on the high layer. Let's go back down here because we're concentrating on the wrinkles. And uh, so if we click this high layer off to where we can't see the details, see that? Click that off, then I can still see there's some difference down here, things that are showing what these wrinkles are made of, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on low I'm going to go to my um, clone tool or stamp tool, if you want to call it that, because it kind of looks like a stamp. And oh, and the quick key is S. So I hit the S key, I hit the brackets, uh, right or left, the ones that are kind of over there by the enter key. Uh, those will make your uh, brush grow or shrink. Okay, I'm going to get a nice big brush. Let's look at my brush options. I've got hardness at 30%, that's fine. Size 400 PX doesn't matter because that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm adjusting here with these brackets, right? The bracket keys. I love pressing those bracket keys. It's awesome. Okay, so uh, now I'm I'm remember I'm just in this low layer. I'm going to uh, basically clone a stamp. So I've got my flow set to 3%. Opacity, I never really ever adjust opacity. Flow is cool because basically what that means is that the more you kind of scrub, the more uh, damage you're going to do. So I'm going to just put my, I'm, I'm hitting my Alt key to select my, where I am uh, cloning from. And then I'm going to just get it in there. And remember, all of this stuff, all of these wrinkles, these are nasty, bad wrinkles, right? Well, they have two things. They have texture and they have tone. So I'm going to basically get rid of them in the low layer by removing the tone. I'm going to shrink that cursor down a little bit. Look at that. Just pulling them right out of there. Awesome. Now this part over here, I probably would crop this off anyway, but what the heck. Let's just go ahead and try it. And if it's really bad, then... Uh, you know, we're cropping it off anyways, who cares? So I'm just cloning and stamping away at my 3% flow, which means i got to scrub it a little bit. I use a Wacom tablet, and uh, it's an old uh, bamboo, and it has, like, this really bad worn spot because I do a lot of the scrubbing, and I'm really bad at changing the, the nibs, which are the little tips. The official word is nibs. How cool is that? Okay, so, ah, man, that's a really good looking sleeve right there. Let's do this. Let's just kind of scrub around in there a little bit more. Remember, I am, I've got a big brush because I want on these areas like this, I really want to smooth it out. And everything can just be as blurry as you want to be. Let's scoot over here to the breastage area. And uh, we're going to just kind of scrub around on there. It's okay to scrub around on client breasts in Photoshop, not when you're doing the shoot. So we're going to just uh, clone around here. And you notice I hit the space bar to get the little, the little hand uh, so I can move it around. It's an important tool you got to have, especially if you're using a... Uh, Wacom, Wacom, Wacom tablet. And uh, yeah, so I think this all is looking pretty good. Do, 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 do. Okay. And I hit my space bar and my alt key on my PC. Hit the F key. It takes me into full screen to where I can actually move it around where I want to instead of where it thinks I should. All right, so everything looks pretty good. This little crooked thing over there, I'm not really bothered by it, uh, by that little crook right there. Because you know, something could still be crooked like that and not be terribly wrinkled, I think, in my mind. doesn't draw my attention. Okay, now, so now we're going to put the high layer back on and see how we did. Okay, there's the high layer. Now I'm going to click in that high layer, make sure that that high layer is selected. Um, also make sure that in your clone tool you are on current layer. If you put it over to current below, that really messes everything up when you start doing this. Um, so now you see we still we still have wrinkles, right? Click 
that off. Oh, everything's beautiful. Click it back on. Oh, we still got wrinkles. All right, so I'm going to size down a little bit. I'm going to keep at this percentage. Um, now, if you have a, a textured surface, if you have a t-shirt that has like little ribs in it, then you want to jack that um, flow up to, you know, 40 or 50 percent. And that'll help you keep that texture in there instead of getting all blurry. Um, but in this case, this is a smooth surface. We don't really care. So let's just go back to 3% on the flow. And I'm going to uh, select here. And remember, I'm on the high layer now, so I'm affecting only the textures, right? So I'm going to scrub, scrub around on there. Do, 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 do. Scrubbing. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and bump this up. Let's say 15%, OK? And it'll just go a little bit faster. And since we aren't working with a lot of detail, um, this big white area, I mean, how much easier could that be, right? I picked a really good photo to use for this tutorial. I'm so smart. OK, so um, right now we're just getting the leftover textures that are still there. And uh, let's do this. I'm going to hit. Uh, control and spacebar to help me zoom in. Now this is the tricky part over on this side. So let's start down here low. We don't want to get too crazy uh, with the toning and, and everything up there because it might look kind of weird. Um, just because of the way the shadow, you might expect some shadow to be back there. So let's go ahead and, and uh, zoom down there. Do, do, do. Just Plugging away. Um, let's go over here and see. Oh, look, she's still got some little chest wrinkles. No offense, my dear client. Let's scrub around. You want know, to make sure that you know if there if there is actual uh, you know form showing in this. Area, you want to make sure that you don't mess that up. But that that would most likely be shadows. That would most likely be in the low layer. But right now we're just working on um, textures, so I'm not really concerned that I'm really wiping anything out. And you know, okay, you know, it might not be perfect. Look, we got one little wrinkle right up there. Let's see if we can get it. Let's zoom in here. Um, yeah, I think we can get it. Okay. Now, if you get in too close on the high layer, let me show you uh, an example. Especially, uh, it's especially good on hair. But if you get in too close, sometimes you'll start to see a little bit of bleed from the tone that's in the lower layer because it's all blurred out, right? Well, what you do is you go ahead and fix it in the high layer, and then you jump over the low layer, and then you can fix it there. I'll do another tutorial on uh, probably like hair, and that will. It will help you see how to use that. So there we go. I'm pretty happy with this, I think. I think it looks pretty good. Now, like I said, that could that could uh, bother me a little bit. I'm probably going to crop that anyway, but um, you know, let's just take a look at it. So if you go over to your layers over here and you hold down the Alt key and hit the background, you can see how it originally looked. And then keep that Alt key down and click it again, and it shows you how it looks now. So um, I don't know. I think that's a pretty good job. What do you think? Yeah, pretty good. Oh, that's wrinkly. Oh, that's not wrinkly. Yeah, yeah. So so that's it. Um, so basically, we just ironed a shirt in Photoshop. Now, one other thing, like I said, I, I might be a little bit picky over here. If this was a final photo, and I'll just show you really quick what I would do. I would jump over to my low layer, um, make sure I'm still on my tool, and I want to take this back down to 3%. I like 3% because it doesn't affect things too immediately, but you don't have to sit there and scrub forever. Um, so I'm going to bring it. i got a nice big, um, nice big cursor here. I'm going to select this area, and since it's I'm in the low layer, that area is not... It has some other color in it, but it's not going to really show up. I'm going to blow this up a little bit bigger. I'm just going to paint 
a little bit in there. Look at that, just a tiny bit, just to say, hey, look, there's some shadow. Yeah? No? Yeah, I think that's fine. It's okay to have a little shadow, right? Yeah, we want to dust it up a little bit. We can go back and select some of the white area and do it again. So look at that. I, I think it looks good. Um, again, I would do other things here, but uh, at this point I don't really need to do it because uh, I already did it. And I'm just showing you ironing shirts. So there you go. Ironing shirts in Photoshop with frequency separation. I think that frequency separation is an incredible tool. Uh, it keeps you from having, if you're trying to do cloning and stamping in certain areas like this, then you start to get really weird textures and, and, and tones and things that things are blurring together and they, it just gets really nasty and, and ugly. So I think that this is an awesome tool to use for uh, fixing this problem. And uh, so that's the end of this tutorial. Of course, I would save it and close it and all of that stuff, but I've already done this, so I'm not going to save this file. So that's the end of the tutorial, and um, I hope to hear from you. Let me know if you have any other questions, and uh, I hope this, was, this video was helpful for you. Thanks.